you know, we dig it out in the trenches every single day. We go out and carve it out with you guys every single day. Um, everybody has a struggle. Everybody has, you know, the stuff that they carry around that, that, that we have to overcome, that we have to work through. And, you know, we hear it, you'll hear this over and over and over again, and we talk about it a lot, and that is everything is cured with activity. Everything is resolved with activity, especially in this business. You can, you can deal with your struggles in this business by simply doing more. And I'll give you the alternative to that. My mom works for an investment company in Southern California. It's a well-known company. It is a very wealthy company. They have beautiful offices in uh, Beverly Hills. Um, and about uh, a month or so ago, they were moving their offices from one beautiful building to another beautiful building, right? All the pretty people were moving from one building to another, right? The move itself was costing um, probably a few million dollars, but the company was looking to cut costs and they were going to be able to save about $10 million over the course of the next 10 years if they made this move. And so my mom, in her role, basically facilitated the move. She had to make sure that all the, all the people that work in her building um, – and all of the traders, she works for an investment company, all of the traders and all of their personal desk, office items, everything got correlated from one place to another and in the right place, right? And then uh, everything had to be reset up, all the servers, all the blah, 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 right? All the crap that you go through when you have to move. So for about three weeks straight, my mom worked about seven days a week, and she averaged probably 12 to 15 hours a day, every single day, every single day. In fact, Steve and I used to get on the phone with her in the evening while she would be driving home. She would go to work at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and then at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night, we would be on the phone with her trying to just have conversation with her because she drives an hour and a half to work. And so we were afraid she would get sleepy going home, right? And so we would be talking her through it. Okay, so we would just be trying to keep her awake while she was driving home so she could go home, go to sleep, get up, do it again, right? Seven days a week, three weeks, 14, 15, 16 hours a day. Do you know how much her pay increased? Zero. Zero. She has the same bills, the same struggle, the same garbage that she had to deal with prior to the three weeks, after the three weeks. Same crap. The same kind of garbage that you and I carry around, the same kind of garbage that Steve and I carry around, the same kind of things that everybody carries around. But you know what the difference is? Steve and I are well compensated when we increase our, our activity level by double. If I work twice as hard, guess what? I'm going to make better, probably better than twice as much. That's the difference. And I, I was dealing with some stuff this afternoon, and it was a position where it would have been a real blessing for um, for me to be able to kind of step in and, and, and say to my mom, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. And as I was sitting at my desk having, and this is kind of one of those transparent moments that I don't typically share with you all, so you're going to have to just bear with me for a few minutes. Um, I was sitting at my desk kind of having one of my minor panic attacks and just sitting here kind of stressing, right? I was sitting here uh, starting to sweat a little bit, trying to figure out how can I, I don't want to tell my mom that I can do this if I can't do it. And Steve came down the hall and he said, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? And so I was telling him what was going on and he looked at him, me and he said, that's okay. Why don't you just grab some of those leads in that county that we had been talking about? Why don't you just go in and buy some of those leads and we'll just run, you and I will just, you know, we'll just tag team some of those appointments and, um, and then we'll just go ahead and take care of it for your mom. And I'll tell you what, until you are in a position where by doing that with your activity, can generate the income or whatever it is that you need in your life, and it's such a simple equation, just do a little more, and you will get a little bit more, um, and you can put yourself in the position, not just for the things that you want or need to do in your own house, but for the things that you may need or want to be able to do in somebody else's house, and 
those are the moments in life where you realize um, how blessed you are to be in the position um, and work with the company and with the kind of people that Steve and I get to work with every single day. And I don't mean to get really emotional, but it's, a, it's emotional when you, um, when you get it. It's not the emotion of the struggle. It's the emotion of kind of slapping yourself in the face and saying, oh, hey, wait a minute. If I just do a little bit more here and there, if I were to book, like Kevin Times didn't have the amount of appointments that he needed last week, so do you know what he and his wife did this week? Man, they, they kicked it in, right? They kicked it in, 15 appointments this week, right? They've written three apps so far this week, three. It's only, it's only 6 o'clock on Monday. Those are the things that when you make a decision that, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm not going to deal with this stress anymore. I'm going to kick the door down, and I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the change in my family. And you are put in a position to be able to bless others, and that's when you get it. So I hope that all of you have a moment this week, this year, this decade where you get it. And um, so anyway, I want to move on to – some yeah, let me just add something real quick because I, I didn't know you were yep. actually going to go down this oh, road right now. So <laughs> this was not part of the agenda um, at all, and I'm, I'm glad you did. But it's, you know, it, it, I wasn't expecting it. But I know how much your mother means to you, and I, you know, and, and let's say so, guys. I mean, everybody has somebody like this in your family. It may not be your mother, but you know, I, I, this is something I, I've always fought with over, over my my life. Is that maybe you have enough money, but there's people that you know that doesn't. And you're absolutely in the right business right now to change not only your financial future. I mean, it's kind of greedy to think that, you know, it's only about me. It's, you know, it's about all of our families. Uh, and I know, Angie, you're trying to kind of wade through this with your mom, uh, and you have been for, you know, for a year or two. And we, we don't have to get personal about what it is, but it just it, it comes down to money, and a lot of it, a lot of money. Uh, and her mom is single and got a lot of overhead and bills and grandkids and, you know, all that. And, you know, we are, you know, we're able to step in and do nothing different but make a decision to grab some leads, increase our – sometimes doing it for somebody else is an easier decision than doing it for yourself. I mean, we could have done this for a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. And, you know, it, as I said before, you know, until the pain of this being in the same place becomes greater than the pain of change, you're not going to change anything. So sometimes we, get, we all get content and complacent. But now we, for helping Angela get her mother out of a, a pretty serious situation, it's an automatic. It's an automatic. We grab some leads. We do what we already know how to do. It's just a matter of increasing your activity. That's why our training program is so critically important because we're trying to, Angela mostly, trying to teach you to think like a field underwriter so that these the things that are important, which is being able to book an appointment with a lead, because you can't do that and none of the other stuff matters. You can spend the entire month or a year, and I've got agents doing that, on, the, on product knowledge. It means absolutely nothing. It would if you didn't have us with you, but you have us. You have Angela. You're never going to know what Angela knows unless you have a team that size that Angela has. Because her sword is sharp. Why? Because she's chasing not her business, but all of your business, all the pendings. She's on the phone to the underwriters every time you send her a case. So I'm not saying you can't learn it because you're not smart enough. I'm saying that she does it all day long. Angela says all the time, jump in the pool, start kicking. We're not going to let you drown here. But Angela, I want to go back to the earlier point before I get on that, uh, an entirely different subject. This is personal. And, and I think everybody on this call tonight would be kidding themselves if they can't identify some. You may not be willing to do it for yourself, but be willing to do it for somebody else that, that means something to you. Because there's not a single person on this call. There may be better closers on this call. See the old Jim Rohn statement you can share if you want to, Angela. There may be better closers, better salespeople. There's probably better salespeople on this call than I am. But I, if I outwork you, I'll outearn you. And nobody on this call can't do that. And when you're starting out, be willing to be bad before you. You're going to go out there and run as many appointments as you possibly can. Do it on C leads and B leads, not A's. It just means you're going to dial more, but you need to dial more. Why? Because you, be, you need to get very, very, very good at handling objections before you start spending real money on A leads. Angela, 
So talk to us about your mother's situation and really, you know, a little more about that conversation and what it takes. Because I know somebody else is in the same situation. You know, I'll tell you this, because you just said something that I thought I think was really, really, really important. And um, it leads me to my second point when I started this rant. So my, my first point is this. Um, some of you are in a position where you need to do this as badly for yourself or for someone else in your family as I do. Like, this is very real to me. It's my, my mom has a, um, a financial situation that has been rolling over and over and over and over and over again. And a situation came up last month, and she had to reset the entire arrangement that she had. And the long and the short of it is um, I was on the phone trying to help her get the arrangement reset, and the company is basically not all that excited about doing it, so they're really putting her through the paces. And I don't know that they're going to make it possible for her. And so you're ta we're talking about something to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars, and this particular company doesn't want to wait anymore, right? Uh, they don't, they're not interested in waiting. And my mom is um, in her late 60s, and she works like a dog, and um, she is always there for somebody else in her family. She's always there trying to do something for somebody else. My mom is the one that will, you know, step in and say, oh, I'll do that. Oh, 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 I'll do that for you. Oh, oh, oh I'll do that. And um, I thought to myself, gosh, wouldn't it be and, and this just tells you how real Steve and I are because I was sitting at my desk thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be nice just to be able to pay that off for her? Wouldn't it be nice just to say, you know what, you don't get to have control over my mom when it comes to this, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of it, and then you can go fly a kite. And I sat back, and it wasn't until Steve came down the hallway, and he said, oh, oh, well, that's not, oh, okay, well, that's not, you know, the end of the world, right? Let me ask you a question, guys. If you have a financial situation in your life right now or a bill or a debt or you can't make the bills and the money stretch together every single month, right, and it's panicking you, if you can't say, oh, all right, well, let's just do this and it'll be taken care of and it'll be gone, then you have just as much reason to do, to do what you need to do here as I do, as Steve does, as anybody else here does. And what's frustrating is when I know that agents, and this is really, I think, where I hope that all of you has kind of your own come to Jesus meeting tonight with yourself. Some of you are in a position to need to be able to do that. And the first thing I hear when you get on the phone with me is, well, um, yeah, I, they called to reschedule the appointment, and so, yeah, I took the call. But I, I took the call because they sounded, it sounded like, um, like it wasn't going to be a problem to reschedule. It sounded like uh, they really want to reschedule. I think they're really interested. Um, or, you know, um, I had something come up, and so I had to move my appointment. Or, um, no, I didn't get leads this week. I haven't dialed leads this week because, you know, uh, I had to go water the flowers or wash the car or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. See, the one thing that Steve and I have always done is we treat our business and we treat the things that we have to accomplish like they are life and death. And because we have that commitment to it, the things in our life that really are life and death, our family, our, our, our kids, our grandkids, we, we can say to those people, you know what, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And you have to get yourself to that place too. You just absolutely have to get to yourself to that place. So you have to wipe out the excuses. You have to, be, you have to stop willing, being willing to listen to the excuses or give them time or give them ear. And you, you have to go out and get it done. And you've got to decide what that's going to look like for you. And you've got to go get it done this week. I'm going to go right back and use our two top producers. Not just our top two producers for the last couple of days or the last couple of weeks, but for the last few months consistently, consistently, every single week, every single day. Some, some people make cracks and jokes on, on Group B. Oh, there's Josh again. Oh, there's Kevin again. Yeah, you know why? 
because when Kevin didn't have enough appointments last week, he said, okay, we're not doing this no more, right? And he and his wife went out and doubled it up. It's mindset. It's mindset. Right? Absolutely. And I want to talk about something else, Angela. And I know this is, this is not a training call about products, but you know what? You're going to have a hard time with that argument because I'm not kidding you when I tell you that I think mindset is not a small thing. It's everything. It's absolutely everything. It's not something. It's everything. If you can't control the six inches between your two ears, you won't make it in this business. I don't care how good you are as an appointment center or how good you are with, with products. It won't matter because here's what I know. You've got to control the things you can control. We live in a very skeptical world, a very, very negative world. You're gonna, this, is, this is a business. You're a business for yourself. You're going to go through ebbs and flows, ups and downs. You're going to have the winds of resistance pushing against you. When you need them to be behind your back, you're going to get headwinds. Right? For you to stay in the game, it's all going to come down to controlling the six inches. I heard Angela Day tell someone on the phone, you got to stop buying what your mind is selling. Okay? You got to learn to talk to yourself rather than listen to yourself. That is the number one skill. But Angela, we were talking the other day, we were watching a show on TV, and it really impacted me. It was a silly business show, but it was a guy that was homeless. He had 90 days to build a million dollar business. Folks, it is, you, have, you, you have everything in your hands to make two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Many of you can make 100000 between now and the end of the year because the, the system is already in place. All, it all comes down to your activity and how much you're willing to do. But this guy, while he was sitting – look, here's the message I want to get across to you. He was broke. He had Nothing. Nothing. Remember this from this call, write it down if you, if you need to, because many of you, one of the issues is, and I understand it. I'm not, I'm not, being, I'm not trying to shame anybody or be critical. You know, I've been there. Angela's been there. Some of you don't know that Angela's you know, lived in a car for six to nine months. We know what it's like to be broke, okay? All right? Just so you know, we're not preaching to anybody. We're a 1,000% authentic. Okay? When you're a female single and you're sleeping in your car and showering in Shell gas at your bathroom to go run your appointments for the day, you've hit bottom. Okay? Don't spend your seed money. Some of you, when you make two thousand, you're so far behind your bills, you spend you pay two thousand on your bills and you just spent your seed money. All business owners know this one thing. If you spend your seed money, which is money you need for your business, you're out of business. And therefore, you put your success at risk because you can't buy any more leads. You spent 100% of your income paying your bills. You've got to pay your, yourself first. And whatever's left over, then you pay your bills with. If you spend your seed, you've effectively put yourself out of business. This guy had very little money, and the money that he did have, he had to save it to have any chance of getting himself from being homeless to a business owner. So he slept in the car when he could have taken whatever money he had in his pocket and go stay in that hotel. Now, I'm not saying you're in that situation. Some of you may be, but you can't spend your seed. And what was most important was, I don't remember or not, Angela, was where he was in his life was insignificant to where he was going. The fact that he didn't have what he wanted right now had zero impact on how he saw himself. His mindset was not broke. His mindset was focus on my business, and in time, it will take me home where I want to be. He was more than willing to be a little uncomfortable today and look 90 days down the road. And I know it's tough, but many of you, this is a problem you have, okay? Never spend your seed money, okay? He stepped in the car to save his seed money. And as he started making more money, then he moved himself to an apartment. No furniture. He went to the Goodwill store, spent $36 on plates, glasses, silverware, a um, sleeping bag, 
and then bought a patio cushion to go underneath the sleeping bag to make it feel a little more comfortable. He slept on the floor, bought one lamp for a light, stayed in that apartment for months without, without furniture. Why? Because he had to raise money to, for, to get himself into a business. You don't spend your seed money on expenses and not build your business. Angela, you want to comment on that? Right, and for those of you that don't understand what you're talking what put it into terms that you will grasp. Put it into terms that you will understand. If you are a farmer, right, you have to hold back some seed. You have to be able to replant. Otherwise, you have one crop, and that doesn't make you a farmer. It makes you lucky, right? Makes you one application, farmer. one lead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It makes you a short-term farmer. Yeah. One, one, applica- one, one lead that equals one appointment, that equals one app, doesn't make you a salesperson. It doesn't make you an agent. It makes you lucky. One app that you get paid on and you spend all the money, that's just, that's, 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 not a, that's not a career. That's not a calling. That's not an opportunity for you to totally change your entire life and your entire mindset. What made this guy so powerful is exactly what Steve said. He, was all, he, was never, he never stopped to think about where he was or what he was dealing with right now, right? When he moved into this apartment, he had absolutely nothing. He had enough money to go out and buy a bed and some new clothes and probably some, you know, nice blankets and make it a little bit comfortable, maybe put some up on the walls, decorate a little bit. You know what he did? He went to he went to like a like a Goodwill type store. It wasn't Goodwill even like store, a good yeah. it wasn't even That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I mean it was like a second hand store, you know? Yeah. And they had uh the the cushion that you put on like an outdoor chair, you know, you like you have nice patio furniture and they have those cushions, right? He bought one of those and a blanket. Because he figured it was, he got out of there for like, thir- and a frying pan, one frying pan. He got out of there for like, you know, I don't know, $4 or something like that, right? He had a cushion, a, a blanket that was perfect for sleeping, and he had something he could cook some food on. That's the difference. That's the mindset. That's the mindset. That's yeah. what makes the difference. That's don't spend what your will seat. make. Right, can't spend your can't spend your seeds. You spend you you plant all your seeds, you, and, and and you and you harvest your crops, and you spend all your, your the money you made on you made on selling your crops to pay your bills. You can't buy any more seed. You're now a business farmer. Here's the deal: we're gonna track what we do every single week. Every single week, we're gonna track it. We're gonna write it down. We're gonna write down how many appointments we run, how many apps that we write, what our team does, how many dials we make how many uh, new agents we bring on. We're going to track all of it. We're going to write it all down. We're going to track it. But we're not going to analyze it. We're not going to make any decisions on it. We're going to do that at the end of 60 days, at the end of 90 days. Some of you go out and you work for a day, and then you want to sit back and analyze whether or not this was a good idea. Steve, you're always saying it. It's the law of what kind of numbers, right? Large numbers. Large numbers. It's not the law of little numbers. It's not the law of you have one apple. How many, okay, could I, could I, maybe, I could, maybe I could grow this into one more apple. No. A farmer looks at it and says, I bet I could take this one apple and make me an orchard. And that's the mindset you have to have. You have to look yeah. at what do you have in your hand right now. Okay, I got, uh, you know, an apple, uh, maybe an ear of corn. What could I do with this? I could make me a farm. Not a you know farm what, Angela? Here's, here's the point. So your mom, right now we need about eight thousand bucks. Do you know what it takes to make eight thousand bucks? Eight apps. Yep. After your seventy percent or whatever it is, your contract rate. This is figure you got to write ten apps. Yep. Ten apps is two weeks of part-time production. Two weeks of part-time production, and so we can wipe out your most problems. Anybody mm-hmm. on this call could do that. You might anybody. So if, if it's not if you if you're not willing to do it for yourself, find somebody else to do it for. Because Angela, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get some leads. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get on the road. I'm gonna go out. You're gonna go out. We're gonna wipe this debt out. And how powerful is that? Because we that that's what that's the industry that we're in. We get paid very 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 well. So well it should be illegal, but it's not. And you build residual income along the way. 
It's all in the numbers. Yes, you could be better, as Jim Rohn says. You know, look, I could, I, I, you know, you may have better closing ratio. You may be, be a better salesman. But if you want to run with me, I'm going to still beat you. Why? Because I'm going to outwork you. I may have a 30% closing ratio. You might have an 80% closing ratio. But I do, I'm going to win the contest because I'm going to buy more. And this is, where it gets, this is where the rubber hits the road. You can increase your activity, but you've got to make sure your activity is you're increasing your activity in the right with, with, and you set yourself up for success. So when I say jump, when Andrew says jump in a pool, get started, that doesn't mean it's willy nilly. It means you, according to the principles that we know work, which means you've got to have the, you've got to have you've got to be buying the right amount of leads. You gotta be right. You got depending on how much you want to make it. We can certainly goal set on that. Okay, you gotta buy the right amount of leads. You've gotta be buying we- leads weekly. Doesn't have to be a thousand bucks a week, but it should be two hundred dollars a week, hundred dollars a week, whatever your budget is. Again, that directly determines the amount of appointments that you're gonna set, which directly determines how many people you're gonna see and how many apps you could potentially write. So if you want, you know, if you want to make a five thousand dollars a week, you can't be buying six leads. So just understand that all of that is in control, but set the correct expectations, figure out what you can spend, and then as you start, that's why it's so important not to spend your, not to spend your seed money. As you start cashing checks, reinvest that money into your lead program and increase the, your budget for leads every week until you get to the point where you're making the kind of money that you want to make. You may not be able to start out with 250 a week. You may have to start with $100 a week. But hear me on this, please. Don't buy $100 and then beat them to death for six weeks and expect to get results. You hear me say it all the time. That will bankrupt you emotionally and financially. I would much rather have you spend $100 a week, 50 bucks, whatever it is. You've got to get a fresh new batch of people every single week. And then set yourself up for success. And then, as I said on the Friday night call, if need be, you know, Chuck, get, get on the phone with the relatives. Get on the phone with coworkers. Get on the phone with everybody. Go through your, your, your cell phone. Go through your address. Look, we are insurance people. We set a product that everybody needs. They may not want it because they, they haven't met you yet, but they will want it after they meet you. Stand out on the street corner with a, with, a, with a breadboard on. I don't care what it is. There's nothing wrong with also working your warm market so you can get yourself a lead budget. There is no excuses for you to – People for, that for talk us, about no, – Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. I thought you were done. I, thought you were done. I, I, I just wanted to comment on the whole lead budget thing. You know, when I talk with new agents, and some of you I haven't had this conversation with, you know, when you're – if you're stressing about leads, right, if you're a new agent and you're worrying about leads, oh, how am I going to afford to buy leads week after week after week? You know, Steve and Angela say 150 to 250 dollars a week every single week. Oh my God! Oh my God! Look, guys, and I say this to people, and sometimes I think that their eyes kind of glaze over. Sometimes I say it to Steve, and I don't think he gets it. When I said it to myself, like I was like, "This is impacting." That should only hurt for about a week, maybe two weeks. You should only have to get creative and figure out how am I going to buy leads for the next week or two. Why? Because. After that first week, you should be converting those leads into applications, and those applications should convert into commissions, and part of that commission money is now your lead budget. So if you're trying to figure out how are you going to beg, borrow, and steal your lead budget for the next six months, you got it wrong. It should only be for about a week, right? Because then your activity should kick in, and your activity should be converting those leads into commissions, which is more seed. There is no secret sauce, folks. It really isn't. Everybody can do this. Everybody. We believe in each and every one of you. And as Angela says, jump in the pool, start kicking. We will not let you drown. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.